I know Bozemanites like to travel. Full disclosure, I'm not in the business, but I'm going to see if you could discover maybe new lands by bike. So let's go. Are you interested in discovering local wildlife, windmills, quaint villages? <laughs> Having fun with uh, old, new or old friends, comparing tan lines, or perhaps casting your shadow in new lands? If so, then bike touring might just be right for you. Bike touring is about the people you meet and share with your travel companions. Old Martin here spends his summers making schnapps from local herbs and wildflowers in the mountains of Sylvania, and then sharing his schnapps and snacks with passing travelers. You can create similar memories. After five years and memorable tours here in the Alsace, my wife declared, I like everything about bike touring except the bike part. <laughs> so bike touring isn't for everyone, and it's seldom about getting to a destination. It mostly involves messing about all day until you get to your overnight stop. Cross-state rides like Ragbri are great if you like sharing the experience with 10 to 20,000 new best friends. It's sort of a Sturgis on for bicyclists, except everyone within 50 miles actually joins the party. And then addition, in addition to mass rides, you can join commercial rides, package tours, charity rides, and so on. The bicycle, as they see, is an immersion device. The car isolates, walking limits your reach. So I like to add days or weeks to business trips and explore local areas. Here, it was the empty streets of New Orleans post-Katrina. Bike touring is much less athletic than much of you might think. Gears get you up hills. Walking is okay, but match the difficulty of your condition. The biggest challenge for most is actually sitting on a bike saddle for hours. So if your butt hurts, you probably won't enjoy it, but this tractor seat's the wrong approach. Look for traveling companions with complementary skills and attitudes. Ideal groups include a mechanic, route planner, navigator, linguist, cook, and one leader. <laughs> My 2008 group had one of every, and everybody was under 60, or well, one, only three were under 60, I should say. Your issues are equal, I think, to the group size squared. One person, no arguments, double the number, quadruple the arguments. <laughs> this post-high school ride with my son in France, we could both spot bakeries, and we never argued about whether to stop. Lodging and tour services are your biggest expense. You can spend two or three hundred dollars a day with a commercial tour, stay in chateaus, have a route guide and a support van. I toured for 18 days in Spain, shared a room in modest hotels, and I think we spent no more than about eight hundred dollars for the whole thing. If you write every day, you'll sleep. Perhaps midday naps. You can stay in hotels, hostels, or private homes through networks like warm showers. Camping is less expensive, more flexible, but you do have to carry the gear or arrange for a support van. Nearly any bike works if you credit card tour. On this tour, we skip the camp and cook gear. Consider four aspects. It's reliability, low gears, adequate carrying capacity, and comfort. If you rent locally, bring your own saddle and pedals and your shoes. Uh, you don't have to wear a Lycra, okay? Make a list, load it on your bike, go for a ride, and then go home and cut it in half. <laughs> if you don't, you'll probably be throwing things away or sending it home. Most of us use panniers or trailers if you don't have a support van. Lay out and pack everything before you go. I like Ziplocs, you can find everything, it keeps it dry and protected and easy to find, but pack everything, sit on it, zip it, and you can see how much you have. Electronics are the new issue. Combine devices, combine chargers to cut the weight. Uh, first timers usually joined a planned supported tour, but that's not the only option. If you set your own route, you don't have to let it ruin your tour. If you get behind schedule or if you want to avoid big cities, take trains, buses, or shortcuts. In this case, the cop didn't like our route out of Cordoba. 
On the second encounter, <laughs> we found him. He gave us a motorcycle escort to the road that he preferred we should be on. <laughs> a GPS is great if you know how to use it. Smartphones work if you can see the screen and sunlight and if you can afford the data. And paper maps always work. If you don't get lost at least once a day, you're not trying. <laughs> this road looked great on the Garmin, but the pavement gradually disappeared. It stopped at a river. There was no bridge. So we backtracked. We got some vague directions. And fortunately, a few miles after we found pavement, there was a, <laughs> there was a cafe and a bar there. So we were in good shape. The unexpected, uh, it's what makes it memorable. This road in Quebec just ended, and we thought maybe we had weighed, and we decided that wasn't a good idea. We didn't know exactly where we were, but we weren't really lost, we decided. But it wasn't raining, so we were okay. Embrace the contrast here. Deciphering the signs, menus, and the mangled English instructions is part of the adventure. The men seldom bother with the signs, and on mass rides like Ragbri, every facility is unisex, including the cornfields. If you're considering international travel, the dollar is stronger than it's been in years. It's a great time to discover new countries and cultures. After getting there, almost any country is affordable. Explore the village markets like this one in Nice. Go local, eat local, and meet the locals. They're interesting. Consider the possibilities. Start planning your trip. What states, countries, and cultures appeal to you? Maybe extend your next trip. Where would you like to get lost? What passages would you like to explore? Thank you. <laughs>